Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm gonna check the new jumper remote controller, the T8SG. This remote controller is a 10 channel multi-protocol remote controller that uses the deviation firmware and it supports many protocols as you can see such as the DSM2, DSMX, Valkyra, FRSky, HiSky, SEMA and many more. So basically this remote controller is going to enable you to control almost practically every quadcopter that you have at home. So let's open the box and see what we're getting inside. First of all, the jumper came with its own case, which is a great add-on because it will enable you to protect this tiny transmitter. As you can see, it's a pretty small one. I don't have enormous hands. In addition, we also got this carrying strap and unfortunately it didn't come with any instructions, but you can find the instructions manual online. Just to show you how small it is, you can see how it looks next to my Taranix X9D+. Plus. So it is much smaller than my Taranis. It weighs only 365 grams including the battery, whereas my Taranis weighs 935 grams, which is way heavier. Uh, so let's have a look at the remote controller itself. On the top of the remote controller, we have an SMA antenna connector, audio output, four switches, all of them have three positions. We have the auxiliary five and auxiliary four, which are rotatable dials. And we have the normal four channels. So in total, we have 10 channels. This remote controller is using a 2S battery, which is not included. And you will have to provide your own one. It's not so convenient. So you have to insert your battery inside and then use the balance connector in order to turn it on. Now I highly recommend you in order to protect this connector to use an extender because it's going to make your life much easier. And with some batteries I found myself that I had to struggle in order to insert the batteries. So and I think this connector is not very durable and it can fall off so if you want to save yourself opening the remote controller and have to resolder this connected to the board get yourself a 2s balance connector and just make an extender this is the connector i just made you can see when i'm going to connect a 2s battery the connector is going to be extended so we can just leave this connector connected inside the remote controller and then we can just plug the 2s battery by the way, the USB port is located somewhere inside this remote controller and I heard that in the new version it's going to be exposed somewhere over here. But in this one, you are going to need to take this controller apart in order to update the firmware of the remote controller. After you secured the 2S battery inside the remote controller, turning it on is done by this power switch. And now I'm going to guide you through all the settings and menus. So first of all, on the top right, we can see the voltage state of the battery that you are using to power this remote controller with. Output strength, it's selectable in the menu. The image of the model that we're using. Trim indicators for all the channels. The model that we're currently using. And we have also two timers. Entering the menu is done by pressing the enter button. Then we have four options. First, we can configure the model that we're currently using. Transmitter menu that allows us to change various settings in the transmitter, such as language, the menu that we're using. We can monitor the channels and see that it's working. You have a telemetry motor monitor. We can also perform a range test. Pressing USB will turn on the USB drive. And then you can connect the inside connector in order to update the version of this remote controller. And we can also see the deviation firmware that we are currently running. So the most interesting part for most of you is probably the model menu where we can configure all the models that this remote controller supports. And there are dozens of models. For example, you can see that you have many protocols. Right now it's configured to be on FRSky. We can change it to many of them. 45 options in total. And also each option has sub option menu which you can access by pressing enter. And then you can turn on and off various settings inside this menu. The best way to see if your quadcopter is compatible with the deviation firmware is to go through the instructions manual and look for your model. For example, in order to bind the Ishin E00, you will have to choose the MJXQ protocol, then press enter and choose the Ishin E010 format, then press exit, turn on the quadcopter, then press reinit, 
Now it's bound, you can see that it is working. If you wish to bind an FR Sky product such as the Minikube, just choose the first FR Sky, don't be confused with the V8 or the X. So first hit bind and then just connect the battery while holding the bind button. And now you can see that it's working correctly. Once I turn it off, the failsafe kicks in and once I turn it on, it will automatically be bound to this receiver. If a receiver that supports telemetry is connected, you can access the telemetry screen just by long pressing the up button. And then you can see, for example, that this one is the RSSI. Once I cover the antenna, it drops and it can configure the remote controller to alert you when it drops under a certain value. In addition, this remote controller vibrates, so it's pretty convenient. Configuring all the auxiliary channels is done through the model menu. Then you have to go to mixer and then you can enable the channels that you want to use. For example, here we have the normal one, two, three, four channels, the aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. Of course, we can change the order. Then I set also channel six to be SWA1. It's set to simple, but we can also change the expo and other settings. But if you're just looking for a normal operation mode, set it to simple. And then you can just select the source by changing this value. So I'm going to leave it on A1. You can also change the scale. And once you're done, just hit save. Setting the timers on the main screen is done through the timers menu. You can set the switch that will start the timer, will reset it. In total, you have four timers, which is more than enough. On the main page config, you can configure how the main page is going to look. So for example, box one is channel three. So you can see that channel three is the throttle. So you can see the indications of its position. Then we have the timer one and timer two. So you can customize pretty much everything. So you can change, choose whether to show the trims, the battery power and so on. Now I took this remote controller outside to see how it performs. And my wife is all the way up there next to the trees, not so far from them. We're still getting a good signal. And of course, if I will put it here, now I got a fail safe, but we have a direct line of sight and it's still working properly. So I'm going, she's going to send me the coordinates and I'm going to calculate the distance and actually it can perform even better than that. But this is as far as I can go with maintaining a line of sight. So this is a full range remote controller and you're not going to have any range issues, especially if you don't fly your quadcopter more than one kilometer or so, which I normally never do. The biggest advantage, of course, is the ability to control multiple quadcopters with single controller and for a guy that reviews quadcopter this is an awesome thing of course you can buy a devil 7e you can flash it and use the same firmware but this is an out of the box solution and for about 90 bucks you are getting a fully working product the main downside of this remote controller is that the build quality is not so great i didn't like this battery door which can fall off pretty quickly. I think this this bay is also not so great and they could have done a better job by putting a door that is more similar to the one they have in my Tyrannis. I think it could have been much better. You can also change between mode 1 and mode 2 by the way which is great for somebody who flies mode 1. But of course you will have to remove the springs in order to cancel the self-centering property of the right stick. This remote controller is also pretty compact and you're getting also a nice carrying case to carry it around. I'm pretty sure that Jumper or whichever company that manufactured this remote controller are going to improve it and they are probably going to release an improved version pretty soon because as you can tell this field is evolving very very rapidly. So as always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this remote controller, feel free to ask it in the comment section below and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.